One of my must-complete items on my to-do list before we reinstalled the new motor is to get the fuel tanks cleaned uh, since I knew that at least one of them had a substantial amount of water in it. So I called Clean Fuel of Deltaville, a local small business owner, to come out and clean the fuel tanks. So here we see um, his equipment that he uses. This particular filter and pump is able to move about 10 gallons an hour. So the first thing we did was to clean out the auxiliary fuel tank, which is about 30 gallons. Here you see the fuel as it first came out through the first pass. We let the filter run for long enough to do about 10 passes on the fuel tank. And he was telling me that the fuel really wasn't in that bad a condition. So we went ahead and did that and then moved on to the main tank, which is uh, was sitting underneath where the engine would be. So here's the fuel out of the main tank. And if you remember what the fuel looked like from the auxiliary tank, you'll notice that it's a much brighter red and has kind of a different sheen to it. What he told me was that there was so much water in the tank that it, it all of it was not able to settle out and became infused with the fuel because of the new additives that are put into it. And he said that this fuel was so bad that it was best to just go ahead and toss it. So that's what we did. I tossed uh, 60 plus gallons of uh, diesel fuel and we got on with it. After he had cleaned all his stuff up and packed up, he made the recommendation that I go in through the access hole in that main tank and clean out as much of it as I could on the inside by using one of those little parts pickup tools and some paper towels. So here you see me with a clean paper towel going in through the uh, access hole in the main tank using that little pickup tool and here it is all the way down inside the tank wiping up the inside as much as I could. So here you see me carefully removing the first of many, in fact the whole roll of paper towels pulling it out through the access hatch. It soaked up any of the remaining uh, water impregnated fuel in there plus since there was a pretty good amount of water in there there was also a lot of algae which is the black stuff you see here on the bottom so here it is a whole bag full of these uh, paper towels uh, from cleaning out the inside of the fuel tank the next part of this job is a lot funner than the last part that is installing the new KUS US fuel tank gauge the first part of that is to install this adapter here which you see this replaces the access cover then that allows the fuel gauge itself to screw into that which is what you see here being tightened down and the wiring coming out of it that has to go to a um, panel to give you the information of how uh, what your fluid level is in that tank recommend that you tune in probably to the next vlog where I'm going to go over the system that I'll be installing to give you or me the tank level you know, in my tanks my battery monitors and some electrical consumption information so that should be very interesting so go ahead and hit that uh, notification button get the little bell up there so you can tell when this is posted up My new house bank consists of four L16 batteries, which you see here. These are uh, generally used in floor sweepers and whatnot. They're a six volt battery, but the th what I like about them is that they're a pretty high uh, density level. Uh, they can come anywhere from uh, 380 to 430 amp hours a piece, depending on what you want to pay for them. These here I got off of Amazon. They're a 380 amp hour battery. Uh, four of them cost $1,800 delivered to the door. So that gives me 730 amp hours, 780 amp hours. I'll do the math here and let you know. So first task was to move these in a dock card here uh, all the way from the office over to my boat. And I did get a little help with that, but I basically dragged them over all myself. 
Now the battery's over to the boat, I then use the main boom as a crane and a block and tackle to lift them up out of the dock cart here, then over the top of the stanchions and dropping them in through the Lazarus here. Now on my 416 the Lazarus has a access hatch here and that access hatch is almost a straight shot down through that opening and right onto the shelf below where I placed the batteries. So that's what I did with all four. As you see them here dropping in down and then here they are the batteries sitting on the shelf inside ready to be wired up. All right. That's the end of this week's vlog number 66. I just want to give everybody a heads up that the next one to two vlogs are going to cover the unboxing and installation of a Simran Marine Products monitoring system. Now this system gives the ability to monitor up to four battery banks, uh, four tank levels, uh, voltages, um, a lot of different things so go ahead and tune in uh, next week and we're going to cover the at least the unboxing and possibly the starting of the installation process which is all sort of dependent upon uh, the hurricane that's blowing through here right now that I if I can get back out to the boat so tune in next week remember as always go ahead and hit that subscription button we really appreciate it give us a like and also remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks a lot.